Yo, what is going on guys? DJ has here, CollectiveKicks.com. Wanted to bring you guys this week's Top 5 Tuesday video. Per your guys' request from last week, I want to do the Top 5 Fun Facts of Adidas Boost. Thank you for the suggestion last week, and if you guys have suggestions for the future Top 5 Tuesday videos, leave them in the comment section. Been waiting to actually do this video. I was going to do kind of a ultimate guide to Adidas Boost for those people that are newer to the sneaker game, and they've heard, they've heard a lot about Adidas Boost, but they don't really know where it came from and how it's evolved to the uh, phenomenal sneaker that it is today. So this will be hopefully informative for those people. Also, uh, for people maybe five or 10 years from the date of this video, looking back, hopefully this will be a nice little history stamp. If you guys do like the video, please hit the thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into the top five fun facts of Adidas Boost. All right, so fun fact number one, what exactly is Adidas Boost? As you can see on the Boost ball here, it looks like a little styrofoam type material. It looks a little bit springy and it looks kind of rubberish, but what is it made out of? It's actually made of hundreds of nuggets of super springy thermoplastic polyurethane. And those little pellets are actually just fused together and it creates the Boost material. So fun fact number two, let's go ahead and get into the history of Boost. We're gonna just cover the history of Boost from the production perspective first and then we'll get into a little bit more of the history and the rivalry that they have with Puma in a minute. In February 2013, the Adidas Energy Boost launched and that was the very first sneaker that actually featured the Adidas Boost technology. May 14th, 2014, the Pure Boost came out and it was geared towards running, but it actually was the first pair of sneakers that really crossed over to the lifestyle segment. People like myself definitely liked those sneakers a lot. Organically, they just became the lifestyle model. October 2014, the Adidas Basketball D Rose 5 sneaker was the very first basketball sneaker to feature Adidas Boost, followed by the Crazy Light. February 11th, 2015 was a pretty phenomenal day for Adidas because that was the first date that they released the Adidas Ultra Boost, which was dubbed the greatest running sneaker ever. July 2016, the Crazy Light Boost was the very first basketball sneaker to feature full length boost. So in 2016, it was a record year for Adidas. The overall revenue growth was 20%, which is pretty massive. Fun fact number three, let's go ahead and get into influence. So you can't really get into influence without mentioning the name John Wexler. If you don't know who that is, he's basically the one that was responsible for bringing Kanye West to Adidas, as well as some many other artists. He's one of those people that is constantly on social media and constantly supporting the brand. And he's very, very passionate about the brand. Definitely it's one of those people I'm trying to get a hold of. It would be great to actually do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interview with uh, Wexler. So maybe it's something like that can happen in the future, considering we're both in Portland. May, 2015, Kanye rocked an all white Adidas Energy Boost ESM. Many people mistook it for the Adidas Ultra Boost, but it was not. And immediately after that, that colorway sold out on adidas.com. Kanye actually wore the triple white Ultra Boost as well before they released. May 19th, they actually released in 2015 and they instantly sold out. It was the very first colorway of the Ultra Boost to actually sell out and have a resale market. February 28, 2015, 9,000 pairs of Yeezys dropped. The very first model that Kanye designed, the 750s, and it was the very first model that had encapsulated boost. That instantly sold out as well. June 27, 2015, the Turtle Dove colorway of the 350 boost released in the encapsulated boost as well. June 27, 2015, we saw the Pirate Blacks release. 2016, we saw tons of growth with the Adidas Ultra Boost in the version one and two colorways. We also saw lots of growth with the Yeezy line as we saw five colorways of the 350s and three colorways of the 750s release. So fun fact number four, let's go ahead and get into the rivalry with Puma. If you're not familiar, Puma has a sneaker called the Energy, as you can see right here and it looks like it has boost on the shoe. I did a video showing this as well as the Saucony Everrun and the Skecher Burst, comparing that to the Ultra Boost and Boost technology. If you guys wanna peep that video, go check the channel. So how is it possible that Puma can actually produce this? Well, what if I told you guys that Puma actually had this uh, concept before Adidas? In 2009, Puma was actually working with that BASF company, but then in 2011, BASF actually canceled the work with Puma and decided to just work exclusively with Adidas. In April 2016, the legal battles began. The court actually rejected the attempt by Adidas to prevent Puma from selling the ETPU material. The ETPU stood for Expanded Thermoplastic Polyurethane, um, also called Energy. Interestingly enough, there's more lawsuits that are happening behind the scenes and we haven't seen Puma actually create more different versions of the energy material. So we'll see how that goes in the future. But this isn't the first time that Adidas and Puma actually had issues. Problems actually started in 1948. 
The family members, Adolf and Rudolf Dazzler, they actually had one company and then they separated because of their arguments. Addy Dazzler started Adidas and Rudolf Dazzler started Puma. Fun fact number five, why are Adidas Boost sneakers hyped up in general? The Boost materials that they feature on the Adidas sneakers look like a gimmick, but when you try them on your feet, it's the truth. It's really responsive. They're very, very cushiony and they don't disintegrate over time. It's just a really, really comfortable pair of sneakers. Like I've said in the past, all pizza is good, like all Boost is good. It doesn't matter if you have it on the flagship Ultra Boost, the ST, the Pure Boost. The NMDs are not as comfortable as the Ultra Boost, but they're still comfortable, and I think that that speaks volumes. It's not just a performance technology, it's a lifestyle technology as well, one where you can stand in these all day and your feet definitely are a lot more comfortable. You could be a pro athlete or a server at a restaurant and your feet are gonna be thanking you for Adidas Boost no matter what. So obviously the Kanye effect is definitely something that is a reason why these are hyped up. Kanye released his own sneakers and as ugly as they were, the 750s, people jumped on it. They loved those shoes as soon as they released, as much as everybody made fun of them before they, they dropped. He just has a, a different vision. The fact that Adidas is helping him create his vision into a sneaker, I mean, it's just, it's a no brainer. It's really, really coming together well for them. And he has a massive audience. Him paired with the Kardashians, I mean, it, it's just the way it goes. Like he has a massive social media pull, but social media is another major factor why I think that Adidas is flourishing in 2016 and 17 and beyond because they really have a strong following on social media and their hashtag game is strong. They're active out there on social media in a way that other major companies like Nike just is not doing. It feels more personal with Adidas than it does with Nike. Nike, it feels like you get robot responses and, that, and that's just the way it goes. So what is next for Adidas Boost technology? Number one, I think that they need to market their Boost insoles. I really think it would be something that would sell. I know that they've released some cleats with insoles, but it would be awesome to actually have regular Boost insoles. Been something I've been asking for for quite a while now. Hopefully they'll make it come true. Another thing I think that they can do is create Boost slides. I think that Boost slides would be amazing. I actually did a custom Boost slide that I ended up making that I was really it just turned out mediocre, but it was still a fun concept, and I think that Adidas needs to make that actually happen. Collaboration game is on point. They always have tons of collaborations. One that I would actually like to see is an undefeated Ultra Boost. That would be really sick. Obviously, people would love to see like a Supreme Ultra, Ultra Boost or something like that, but the collaborations are very, very smart because they release them in small quantities, and the hype on those usually go through the roof. They're a lot harder to get, but in general, the collaborations are a really smart way to go, and Adidas is doing a phenomenal job with that. So Future Craft could also be another major selling point, the fact that they use 3D printed materials and recycled materials to make the sneakers. That's a great thing that they're doing, and it's smart that they're drawing awareness to the environment as well as... Uh, coming up with some some really cool things. We already know Yeezys are the hot commodity. Want to know how that's going to continue uh, through the next handful of releases. If they start mass producing them, will the hype still be there? I say yes to some extent because they're still extremely comfortable sneakers. And even if every colorway was still sitting in stores, I would pick some up because I really like the overall fit and the comfort of the shoes, regardless of any of the height. The Adidas basketball line is really solid as well. I definitely see a lot more growth with that. I did a review of the Crazy Explosive Low recently as well. Probably gonna be a great summer basketball sneaker if you guys have not seen that review. You can check that out in my videos. And you can see that they'll be growing in other sports like football and whatnot as well, especially with cleats that have insoles that have the Boost technology. I think that the average consumer that's tried both technologies will tell you that Boost and Prime Knit is better than Flyknit and Lunarlon. That direct competition with Nike, I feel like Adidas has the edge at this point. Nike really has to bring it with some better technology. I haven't tried the Vapor Max yet. I will have a review on those soon. Definitely stay tuned for that because I'm really anticipating those sneakers and I just really want to see how the comfort level is on those comparison to Boost as well as to other Nike models. Anyway, so that's all we have. Thank you guys for watching the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you guys want to leave some comments on future Top 5 Tuesday videos that you guys would like to see, as well as top five fun facts of certain sneakers or models. So going forward, I think I'm gonna do two different top five series. One for top five sneakers, anything sneaker related that you guys wanna see, but also I wanna do a top five fact video where basically every week I'll cover a pair of sneakers that you wanna know a little bit more history on, such as the Stan Smiths, Air Max 90s, Air Max 95s, whatever pair of sneakers you guys wanna know a little bit more about leave a comment and let me know and I'll create those content as well. I'm trying to diversify my content, break away from the unboxings. I'm still gonna do unboxings, but more probably like one of those a week where it's just bundled with everything I pick up. And hopefully you guys like that type of video 
and uh, like the, the change in the shift in the channel. If you guys missed some of my videos, go back and check the videos and just scroll through and see if any of the videos look appealing to you and then maybe peep those videos because YouTube's really been messing with me in my, my related videos. I don't even see my own videos on my own feed, like which is just ridiculous to me. Still planning on making lots of content for you guys and enjoying doing that regardless of what YouTube does. And hopefully you guys appreciate that and like the channel. Uh, but thank you all again for watching. Have a good one. Peace, guys.